All right. Okay, so this time I'm going to discuss about statistical tool. Class under chapter three, you have there, especially if it's quantitative research, you have statistical tool. Meaning what statistical tool are you going to use to test your hypothesis, okay? So at the end of this lesson, I hope that you would be able to define statistics and statistical tools, identify the basic statistical tools, and use the appropriate statistical tools for your study. Okay? Now, class, let's have first a recap. You've already taken statistics subject, right? Have you taken statistics subject? Yep. All right. Okay. So now let's recap your lesson. When we say statistics, what's, what is statistics? Anybody please read? Okay. Go ahead, please. Statistics is a branch of science that deals with the collection, analysis, use of data, and drawing of inferences. For example, the whole population. Okay, thank you very much to all of you. So when I am presenting, I can no longer see you, so I can't see who are raising hands. Well, anyway. Class, statistics is a branch of science that deals with the collection, organization, analysis of data, and drawing of inferences from the samples to the whole population. Class, statistics encompasses all the methods and procedures that are used in the collection, presentation, analysis, and interpretation of data. Okay, now class, we have two types of statistics. The first one is descriptive statistics, okay? Russell, please read, what do we mean by descriptive statistics? Russell? What is descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics comprise methods concerned with collecting and describing a set of data to yield meaningful information. In no way does descriptive statistics draw inferences or conclusion about these sets of data. All right, okay. Class, when we say descriptive statistics, when you use descriptive statistics, you use methods that concerns collecting and describing a set of data or a data set, okay? For you to have meaningful information out of this data, okay? So let's have these examples. First one, you use descriptive statistics when, okay? For example, a new principal is in charge of 40 teachers and he would like to know their average salary so for for the new principal to find out the average salary of all the teachers then he needs to use descriptive statistics okay another one another example as a result of recent sur school survey on online learning, many students do not have access to internet. So how did you arrive to that result? Of course, you use descriptive statistics, all right? Another example, in the latest report of CNN New York, cyber hacking has increased to 4 hundred percent during the work from home setup okay so how did you find out that it has increased to 
400%. Of course, through descriptive statistics. Okay? All right. Let's continue. Another type of statistic is what we call inferential statistics. May Ann, would you please read what inferential statistics is? Inferential statistics comprises those methods concerned with the analysis of a subset of data leading to predictions or inferences about the entire set of data. Okay. Class, you use inferential statistics. If you use those methods, when you want to make an analysis of a subset of data, for you to have a prediction or inference about it, Okay, so if descriptive statistics is for you to describe, inferential statistics is for you to be able to make predictions or inferences. Okay, let's have here the examples. A tire dealer, okay, wishes to estimate the average life of a particular brand of tire. So... In this situation, a tire dealer should use inferential statistics. Another, a company projects a decline of 50% in the next five years after analyzing its revenue loss brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay? So class, you are predicting here projects a decline you are making prediction and so what you're going to do you are going to use inferential statistics next based on the total number of text votes for a pop idol in america's got talent he anticipates winning in the final round so it's again prediction anticipating or anticipation is prediction therefore you're going to use inferential statistics okay next class let me discuss the difference between population and sample okay what is population Jean -Lon, can you please read population population is the set of entities entities and element under study Sample is the subset of population. Okay, thank you very much. That's correct. Class, how are you going to determine if it's population or sample? Class, let's say all students of Sagurung High School. That is population. Meaning the entire students, the entire population of Sagurung High School. Okay, so you call it population, the entire students, all the students from grade 7 to grade 12. It's all population. Okay, you call it population. Now, how do you know if it's a sample? For example, you will just get, let's say, five students from grade 7, five students from grade 8, five students from grade 9, five students from grade 10. Five students from grade 11 and five students from grade 12. Okay, those five coming from each grade level, you can call them a sample. But how do you determine your sample? Plus, you can determine your sample depending upon the type of sampling method that you use. Okay, now in this lesson, I am just trying to recall to you the difference between population and sample. Okay. Next, how about parameters and statistics? How are they different? Class, we say parameters. If we refer to all descriptive measures or characteristics of population, while well, statistics refer to all descriptive measures or characteristics of sample. Okay? When it's descriptive measures or characteristics of population, you call it parameters. But if it's descriptive measures or characteristics of a sample, you call it 
statistics. All right? Next, when what what do we mean by census and survey? How are they different? Class, census is the process of gathering information from every element of the population. While survey is the process of gathering information from every element of the sample. Class, uh, do you remember pag nagsusurvey yung PSA? Isa barangay, they can, I, the, I mean, do you remember pag census yung PSA? Yung sa barangay nyo, yung lahat, meaning all the population in your household, they gather information about everybody in your household. They include every element of the population. Yan, you call it census. Census ang tawag doon because you include, you gather information from every element of the population. Lahat ng tao, ginather mo yung information. Now, how is it different from survey? Class, it's a survey because you gather information from every element of the sample. Meaning to say, dun ka lang sa sample mo kumuha ng information. You just gathered information from your sample and not from the entire population. Okay? All right. Now, today class, I will be focusing first on numerical descriptive measures because we won't have enough time for me to cover all the statistical tools. So for now, I'll just be discussing numerical descriptive measures. Okay, first class, we have measure of location. Class, when we say measure of location, it's the value within the range of the data which describes its location or position relative to the entire set of data. So the more common measures are measures of central tendency. We have the percentile, decile, and quartile. Okay, class, first one is measure of central tendency. Class, when we say measure of central tendency, that means that's what we use when we want to describe the center of the data. It's a single value about which observation tend to cluster. And measure of central tendency includes the common measures we have, mean, median, and mode. I'm sure you're familiar with it when you took your statistics subject, right? Okay. First is mean. Plus, this is mean and this is the symbol of mean. Parang X siya may bar sa gitna or like this, you call this mu. Mean. Alright? Mean is the sum of the observation divided by the number of observations total. Now, what are the characteristics of mean? It's interval statistics. You can calculate it on average. The value is determined by every case in the distribution and it's affected by extreme values. Class, when are you going to use mean? Kailan mo gagamitin yung mean sa sa iyong study, in your study? Class, you are going to use mean if you have variables in at least interval scale and the value of each score is desired. You also use mean if values are considerably concentrated or close to each other. So that's the time that you are going to use mean. Next, when are you going to use median? This one, MD, that's median. Plus median or median, it's the middle value of an array. Okay? The characteristics of median or this middle value is ordinal statistic, you use it on rank or position average, and it's not affected by extreme values. You can use it if you want ordinal interpretation or if you need ordinal interpretation. And when middle score is desired, o kung kailangan yung nasa ng score. Okay? And you have presence of extreme values. Then, gagamitin mo median. 
Next, mode. When are you going to use mode? Plus, you use mode for nominal interpretation, meaning when you need nominal interpretation, you use mode. And if you want to have a quick approximation of the central tendency, you also use mode. Okay? Mode class are observations which occurs most frequent in the data set. Okay? Kung yung mean, kung yung mean ay average and yung median is the center or the middle score, yung mode naman class, the observations which occur most frequently. Meaning, yung mas madalas sa isang data set. Okay? Yun yung mode. It's nominal statistics, inspection average, however, it's not unique, and you can have more than one mode. However, what you do, you use, and you see here, the most popular score, and this is not affected by extreme values, and it represents the majority. So if you want to see, and if you want to, to see what score represents the majority, then you can go ahead and use mode for you to see the observation that occurs most frequently. Okay? Next class is percentile. Okay? So you have measures of central tendency under measures of central tendency. You may use mean, median, or mode, depending on your study. Second is percentile. Class percentile is denoted by like this. Ito nga kasi pala yung I na to small, mas nasa baba pa siya. Okay? Percentile divides the data set into 100 equal parts. Each part having 1% of all the data values. For example, class, if Patrick received a rating of 90th percentile in the National Secondary Achievement Test, this means that 90% of the students who took the test had scores lower than or equal to Patrick's. All right? So that is what you call percentile. All right? Okay? For example, if it's eight, if Patrick received a rating of 85th percentile, that's 85, that means 85% of the students who took this, the test had scores that are lower than 85 or equal to 85. Okay? All right, next. Plus, we have decile. Now, decile divides the data set into 10 equal parts, each part having 10% of all data values. Kung yung percentile, 1, 1, hanggang eto baga, it divides the data set into 100 equal parts. Sa decile naman, it divides a data set into 10 equal parts. So, the first decile is 10th or 10th percentile. The second decile is 20th percentile, and so on. And the 10th decile is the 100th, okay? The 100th percentile. For example, if Patrick received a rating of 7th decile, this means that 70% of the student who took the test had scores lower than or equal to Patrick's. Oh, what about naman kung, let's say, nasa 8th decile? What if Patrick received the rating of 8th decile? So this means that 80% of the students who took the test had scores lower than 80 or equal to 80. All right? Next class, we have quartile. Now, if percentile divides into 100 data sets and decile divides into 10 data sets, ito naman, quartile divides a data set into four equal parts. So here, each part have or each part has 25% of all data values. 
The first square tile is 25th percentile. The second is 50th percentile. The third is 75th percentile. And the fourth is 100th percentile. So, for example, class, if Patrick received third quartile, this means that 75 of the students who took the test had scores lower than 75th or equal to Patrick's. Okay? So, that's the, that's the difference between... Ah, uh, that's the difference among percentile, decile, and quartile. All right? Okay. Next class, we have different parametric methods. Okay? First one, you may use Z-test. Okay? So, tatapusin ko lang tong lecture ko sa Z-test before I end this lecture. And continue it next time. Class, when we say Z-test, Z-test is a statistical test for the mean of a population. And you use it if your population is equal or greater than 30. For example, yung respondents mo ay equal sa 30 or more than 30. Then you can use Z-test. Or when the population standard deviation is given. Then, kapag binigay na yung standard deviation, uh, the population standard deviation, you can use Z-test. Okay? So, take note, class, that for you to use Z-test, you have to satisfy at least one of the two conditions. Ano nga yung conditions? Ito. First, your respondents or your, your population, um, your respondents is equal or greater than 30. And class pala is number, okay? The number of, of observations, for example. If the number of observations is equal to 30 or greater than 30, then you can use Z-test. Or if the population standard deviation is given, you can also use Z-test. Whichever condition is met, pwede mo na siyang gamitin yung Z-test. Alright? Okay, how do you use Z-test? This is the formula for the Z-test. Z stands for Z-test. You have this one is a sample mean minus hypothesized population mean. Ito. Divided by, you have the population standard deviation and the sample size. Okay? So, if you're going to use Z-test, if your sample size is equal or greater than 30, okay? Paano pag less than? Di hindi mo siya gagamitin. Okay? Next. Alright. So, class, I will just stop here. I will end here sa discussion ko nitong statistical tools kasi madami talaga siya and I I cannot cover everything just today. Okay? So, let me just uh, have a recap. Okay? Let me first stop presenting. All right. Okay, class, let me just have a recap. So today, I discussed to you the I discussed to you the statistical tools, not all, but I just focused first on I focused first on numerical descriptive measures. We have measure of location. Under that, we have measure of central tendency which are mean, median, and mode. Also, percentile, decile, and quartile. I also tackle the first one under parametric method or test on one sample, if you just have one sample. Okay, Z-test, which you use if you have a sample size of equal to 30 or more than 30. And you have to satisfy 
at least one of these conditions for you to be able to use Z-Test. Okay? So, class, uh, you use Z-Test for testing one sample. Okay? So, I am going to... I am going to discuss another statistical tools which you can choose for, from depending upon your research or your study. So you just pick which one is appropriate for your study, which statistical tool. Okay? Do you have any questions? 